Yes, welcome back, my dear friend. It is another beautiful morning to you out there. You that is in Africa, in Asia, it's in the afternoon here in Asia. By you in Africa, it's in the morning. I'm welcoming you to a very beautiful day. Yeah, any part of the world you are, you are in, uh, in, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, South Korea, United States of America, Canada, Europe. I'm glad you guys are with me. Welcome to the channel, Salon's Blog. Well, 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 I have already delivered one episode. And I want you to go back and listen to that. When you are done with that, you can come back and watch this. Or maybe after watching this, you can go back and watch that. It's very important we put things in, in the rightful places. We, if you want to analyze games, let's analyze games very well. People try to sound like as if Chelsea did not play anything at all. As if Tottenham dominated a game and they did better than Chelsea. But Chelsea got the three points. And nobody forced Tottenham to collect red cards. We did not tackle them. They were the ones using the bad tackles, and they deserved the red card. It was part of the game. For them to come with bad tackles, it means that Chelsea was playing something good. Chelsea was doing something great. That they, they thought the only way to win the ball from Chelsea was to go with the bad tackles. You get it? And don't forget, at the 75th minute, we were already leading two goals to one. Two goals to one. So... There's a there was a possibility we could have ended the game without two goals to one, and that would still be a, be a win. But we went ahead and scored extra two, making it four. And people don't seem to appreciate the fact that Chelsea played a game before they won it. All they are saying is, oh, Tottenham played a high line, and they won. You know, they played a good game. Tottenham played a good game, better game than Chelsea. The high line was the better game. Chelsea's only crime was that the, the, the ball, the, you know, the true ball, the timing of the true ball to the, to the striker, when we are getting it wrong, otherwise we would have scored more goals. The timing of the true ball to the striker is what we are getting wrong. Sometimes Justin will make the run and the ball will not go. Sometimes Ryan will make the run and the ball will not go. Or sometimes they will go and the ball will not be, you know? My friend, <laughs> we, let's move on. We are still analyzing the game. You know, but let me say, um, this is from Blue Footy. He said, I wouldn't consider 50 million for Jackson now if I were Chelsea. His fund fundamentals are too good to ignore. The thing is, people don't have patience nowadays. I'll keep him, even if it means as a backup or loan out, but I'll keep hold of him until the end. Salah had a good fundamentals when he was at Chelsea, but was erratic and inconsistent, like, just like Jackson. You can't ignore those fundamentals, even if they are dirty. Give them time to clean it. Note, note this. In three or four years, Jackson is going to be one of the most complete forwards in the game. It's even too much. Three or four years, to give Jackson the next year. Give Jackson until next season. Now he's gaining more experience in the Premier League. He's young and he's gaining more experience in the, the Premier League. According to the players, if you hear what the players have been saying, Jackson has been under intense pressure the past weeks. Intense pressure. Criticism everywhere. He's been hearing it. Kopama uh, said it. Enzo Fernandez said it. They, they, if you have been following the players on Instagram and some places, they've been saying it that. Jackson has been under intense pressure. If there's any player in the squad that have been under more pressure in this period, it has been Nicholas Jackson. So they were all happy he's finally got a hat trick to ease the stress. The young chap has been under intense pressure. The coaches are trying to manage the situation with him. And finally, he delivered the three goals. At least, let's give him the, 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 the credit for that. Let's give him the credit. Let's give him the credit. Sports getting pl plodded for the, this when really it was Chelsea not having enough quality ideas to get the ball in the net much sooner. Chelsea struggled against low blocks and really should have flooded the goals in against this high line with the pace we have in attack. Sometimes you need to adapt to even your own principle. Sports are getting all the credit from the plaudits as if they've done something great. As for their high, high line ball game you were playing, just because Chelsea could not break through early. I mean, scoring, the, could not score, you know, more goals earlier. 
So all the all the all, all the pundits and the pundits are saying, oh, it was Tottenham. Just because we could not get a ball in and score more goals earlier. By the way, even in 95th minute, teams scored their, their last their first goal in 95th minutes. The game will be going as if the game is about to end. 0-0, zero, zero, draw. Before in the, in, in the last second of the game, a team will score the, just one goal and it becomes a winning goal. What about Chelsea that scored a winning goal in the 75th minute? That was our second goal. Came in the 75th minute, right? So what are we talking about here? Let's celebrate the win. Chelsea, celebrate the win. Celebrate the victory. It's very important. Celebrate the victory. As you can see the picture there. Chelsea was doing everything possible, but Tottenham was playing the high line. And it was difficult. It was always and almost offside. The timing of the ball. Gary never has this to say. Destiny Udoji should have been sent off for the two-footed lunge. That challenge was outlawed 20 years ago. It's unequivocally a red. He would have broken Raheem Sterling's leg if he didn't see it coming. You get it? Do we need Sterling cut in half for that to be a red card? Do we want to, to see Raheem Sterling's leg broken before we know that it, it was a red card offense? The referee, did, that was the error, the only error I saw in the game. Because that tackle could have been a red from the onset, not a yellow that the ref gave him. So you could see it clearly the intention of Tottenham play when they came in. Let's give them a bad tackle. Let's give them a bad tackle. Let's give them a bad tackle. Thinking that would, that would win them the game. I'm not too sure. I cannot say it was intentional. But watching the game over and over and over, dear friend, Chelsea played game yesterday. Otherwise, Tottenham would have scored the goals without those bad tackles. Tottenham would have scored more goals. The first five, six minutes, two attack that Tottenham started, the way they started the game, I, I got scared, honestly. I got scared. I nearly shut down my TV and went back to sleep because it was after 4 a.m. here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia. But I had to hold on <laughs> until the victory was secured. Dear friend, dear friend, dear friend. Well, this is what Paul Hughes has to say. I would be embarrassed if I saw my team capitulate when one day up, try to break opposition's legs and have an away team put the ball in the net seven times when you are supposedly title challenger. You lost 4-1 at home, mate. And for the record, I feel absolutely no embarrassment. This is what he's saying. If you, you don't, let me read for you again. He said, I'll be embarrassed if I saw my team capitulate when one nil up. Tottenham was 1-0 up. They were 1-0 up. And then they tried to break opposition's legs. And half an away team put the ball in their net seven times. Chelsea put the ball in their net seven times. We scored seven goals. If not for the rulings of the VAR and all those things, we scored seven goals. When you are supposedly the title challenger, supposedly you are the one leading with the league table, I'll be embarrassed if I were a Tottenham fan. They were leading 1-0 from the very beginning, isn't it? I want to hear from you in the comment section, my dear friend. You end up losing 4-1 at home. It's absolutely an embarrassment. This is what Paul Hughes had to say. Tottenham fan. I was, if I was a Chelsea fan, I would be a bit embarrassed coming out there. The scoreline flatters them. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> uh, and that was the answer Paul Hughes gave him. When your team, when your team had all the opportunity, when your team had all the opportunity 
and you were leading, you go in kicking opposition team, trying to break their legs in order to do what? When you were leading 1-0, instead of you continue to play your nice game. Let's move on. My time is up. I have to be back. Today is Champions League game. And I will deliver about that for you. By the way, I never knew. In fact, it never came into mind that the referee, Anthony Tellers, the motion was only for one game. Anthony Tellers, the motion was only one game. Now he is back to the Premier League and he is set to ref Chelsea Man City game. What does that sound to you? Yeah. He was demoted only for one game. That was, it wasn't like a punishment. Now he's back and he's been assigned to ref Chelsea Man City game. On that note, think about it. Let me hear from you in the comment section. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> does that make sense to you in the first place? Let me hear from you in the comment section, my dear friend. I'll see you on the other side when you see me. Shalom and peace.